Hello everyone, I'm Ella, and today we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic, which is Karma Mudra in Buddhism. Now, what does religion really mean? Buddhism is a faith that was founded by Siddhartha Gautama, or the Buddha, more than 2,500 years ago in ancient India, which is today's Nepal, with 470 million followers, scholars considered Buddhism one of the major world religions. Its practice has historically been most prominent in East and Southeast Asia, but its influence is growing in the West. Buddhism has three main branches, Theravada Buddhism, Mahayana Buddhism, and Vajrayana Buddhism. Today's Tibetan Buddhism and Chinese Buddhism are both a type of Mahayana Buddhism. In many people's impressions, there are many differences between Tibetan Buddhism and Chinese Buddhism, which makes Tibetan Buddhism sound very, very different and mysterious. Now let's get started. The controversial topics in Buddhism is Karma Mudra. In the murals of many temples in Tibet, we can see that there are many statues of Buddha and gods. A man and woman who embrace and unite each other is called Yabyug, and the female is called Yidam. In addition, Abhiseka is a very important ceremony when Tibetan Buddhism cultivates Tantra. It's like what we call baptism in Christian, but it's more special, strict, and more complicated. From the entrance of the disciple to the highest practice of the Supreme Yoga Tantra, there will be multiple Abhiseka according to different realms. Abhiseka is considered the most solemn and sacred ceremony. If a disciple has processed the Abhiseka, he cannot read any tantric scriptures. Otherwise, he will not be able to cultivate the righteous fruit that will go to hell. So, what kind of ceremony is Abhiseka? Ordinary Abhiseka will be performed in a monastery with Buddha images painted on all sides. The Abhiseka person must first take a bath and change clothes. After putting on the sacrament, the master will hold a treasure bottle filled with water and sprinkle the water on top of the irrigated person's head. After that, the other one was made of human skull and someone will bring the vessel inside. Pour a highland barn wine and let the recipient drink it. This is a general empowerment ceremony, but the highest level of empowerment is still the point of view when practicing the Supreme Yoga Tantra. There is an article widely circulated on the network. It is an interview with Bhutan. She is the Yidam of Vajrajbhuva. Her name is Kimiya. So, she is also called Juba Kimiya. The insight of this article of Kimiya describes how he became a Yidam and the whole process of empowerment. The Supreme Yoga Tantra is also called the Vajrayana. So the disciple who practiced the Supreme Yoga Tantra is also called Vajra. The Bhutanist Yidam Kimiya was born in the time of King Jigme. When Kimiya was 14 years old, she passed through Vajra Juva, then she became a Yidam of Vajra Juva. When Kimiya sleeps as gently strokes Vajra Juva's side, Vajra Juva looked back and saw Kimiya with a beautiful face and asked, The female donor, you, and I have a lot of faith. Do you want to practice Karma Mudra with me? At that time, Bhutan was a country where politics and religion were united. So, women at that time believed that it was a supreme honor to dedicate their bodies to Dharma. So, 14 years old Kimiya readily agreed. As a disciple of the Supreme Yoga Tantra, 
Vajrayuga to Kimiya to a large temple in Kimpu, the capital of Bhutan, and found his master Vajra. There is a veil in the spiritual chamber of Master Jap Garuba, and the Abhiseka ceremony of the Supreme Yoga secret can be carried out in a veil. Master Jabraruba performed a very solemn Vajra Lotu ceremony for Kimiya, which is what we usually call the blessing of Gidam. That process means a vulgar woman ascend to heaven after seeing the sky. To clarify, it is an expression that after the body of a secular virgin was blessed and watched by Vajra Ruba, she became the body of a celestial woman. After the Yidam blessed watch, Master Vajra Ruba and Kimiya entered the barrier to start the Karma Mudra process that was being implemented by the intercourse of man and woman. At this time, Vajra Ruba was outside the tent, kneeling behind the curtain and waiting. When the Karma Mudra process, the Master Vajra sat there and didn't move at all, focus his thoughts and experiencing great joy that all the movements were completely by the Gintam Kimiya. And then after the Karma Mudra, Master Vajra walked to the barrier with the naked Gintam Kimiya and took out the red and white Sintamani from the Yidam's private parts with his thumb and ring finger. The red Sintamani are virgin blood, and the white Sintamani are the body fluid discharged by Master Vajra during the Karma Mudra process. Then, the red and white Sintamani put into a mouth of Vajra This time, Vajra will recite Vajra Sutra. The Master Vajra brought the hand of Yidam Kimiya into the hand of Vajra and said, The Buddhas are evidence, means that I will testify for the Buddha, and I will allow this woman to practice classes of Tantra. Vajra will also warn Juba to follow the etiquette of Tantric practices and not to covet lust. Otherwise, they will go to hell if they fail to achieve the right result. After receiving the Karma Mudra ceremony, Master Vajra will order his disciple Juba to walk behind the veil and to imitate himself and perform the Karma Mudra process again. And Master Vajra will give direction beside them. This is the whole process of classes of Tantra empowerment. So from the process, it's not difficult to see why the Tantric double cultivation method in Tibet is so controversial. Before he came a Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha said, If you don't get rid of the devil, the lust can't come out. In Tantric practice, he also believes that by truly experiencing lust, we can create lust. Christy Chung once starred in a movie about Tibetan Buddhism called Samsara. In the movie, on a plateau of an altitude of 1,500 meters, a pair of three people on horseback rides in a cave and peaks of Apamuan has been practicing for three years. The eminent monk Katashi, at the age of five, already began to enter the temple to practice. When he was in his 20s, he had a cultivation base. After three years of painstaking practice, Tashi's attainments in Buddhism were even praised by the reincarnated raving Buddha in the temple. After returning to the temple, Tashi began to practice a virus Sacrificial activities. When attending a sacrificial activities in the temple, there was a woman breastfeeding a baby. Her white breast caught Tashi's eyes. Tashi, who practiced at the age of five, it's his first time to see a female body. But what is that? Why does she have that and I don't? At this time, Tashi's restless heart no longer listened to his own Dharma call. One night, the senior bad brother passed Tashi's room, and at this time, he heard a very strange moan from the room, 
and then his brother walked over his room and he saw that Kashi was having a lost drink. At the annual harvest celebration, the monks and the temple were invited to a village down the mountain to help the villagers to pray for blessings. But in this event, Kashi met a beautiful village girl named Sama. From then on, Sama's beautiful figure lingered from Kashi's mind, and the struggle of Buddhism and desire Kashi finally couldn't help it one day. He asked the master, Master Buddha also experienced all the world before he enlightened the Dharma at that time. And I began to enter the temple when I was five years old and began to practice. I have not experienced the worldly and how to be born. This is too unfair for me, he said. Listening to Tashi's heartfelt tone, the master had already seen to Tashi's thoughts. So the master allowed Tashi's idea to resume to secular life. After returning to the vulgar, Tashi went to the village of Sama without any hesitation. The two people quietly fell in love. Tashi also saw, took Sama as his wife. From then on, Tashi no longer had the dream of lust to fulfill his emptiness every night. In the secular world, where the sun rises and sun sets, Sama's belly grows big day by day. But life can always consist of love. After returning to the secular world, Tashi experienced the warmth and coldness of the world and experienced this strong food of the week. With a wife, a child, and even a lover. Finally, one day, a senior brother who had not seen him in many years came to the village and found Tashi and brought news that the master was critically ill. The senior brother asked the senior and said, Master is going to die soon. Do you remember who you are? After experiencing all the worldly things, seeing the senior brother from afar, he has made the decision and he finally understands his heart. The happiness he experienced in the world was far less the happiness he got in the practice. Tashi shaved off his head and put on his practice clothes to go back to the temple. Sema was waiting for him on the way that Tashi led the Patri temple. Sema said to Tashi that Nisadhara was married to Sakyamuni. On the day that Sakyamuni left in search for Dharma, Yasahadra and the child were sleeping and the people of the future only remember how Sakyamuni was. Purges and beings are very compassionate, but whenever a child asks who is his father and where is he from the wife of Prince Siddhartha, how would Yasdhara answer? Today's topic is about Tibetan Buddhism. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to thumbs up, and share, and we'll see you at our next videos. Bye!